The mortgage collapse in the U.S. housing market just got even worse in 2023, with mortgage purchase applications crashing by an unbelievable 41% year over year, down to the lowest level in 28 years, even lower than what occurred during the last crash after 2008, indicating that... So let's just stop it right there for just a second. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mortgage applications went went down dramatically. Okay, and this is nothing that we didn't see coming whatsoever. And it's the worst that's been since 94, I believe, is, is the date that it goes back to. And it's a little worse than the 2008 uh, era, which when you look at that just from the face surface, it looks like, oh, my God, this is so scary and everything else. Um, but the, the, here's one one thing to understand is that when mortgage rates came down just a little bit, you know, rates went up to seven and a quarter or so, something like that. And when rates pulled back, even when rates pulled back to six and a half, um, we saw an uptick. When rates got into the low sixes, 6.1, 6.2, uh, we, we saw a surge. We saw a massive surge. And we just saw that in the pending sales data for NAR. Um, we saw 8% month over month from the December to January, which is a massive number. Now, now that, of course, was like Fannie Mae just said in an article, a head fake. Um, that, that's not sustainable, that little. This is not a housing recovery. Now, let me be clear that I do believe that we're going to see prices continue to soften. Absolutely. But are we going to see a crash worse than 2008, like Nick here is talking about? Absolutely not. This is just my opinion. But I do think that we're going to see a little more pain. Why? Because affordability, as crazy it is, and we're going to get into that in this video with rent versus buying and stuff like that, um, There is there, there's going to be some adjustments made. And the real question is, how many buyers can continue to afford to buy houses at today's situation, right? Now, prices are going to soften, interest rates are going to soften, but are we going to run out? Is the barrel going to run dry buyers who can continue to buy? Now I've got I, I posted on Instagram today. Now this is very interesting because I wanted to I wanted to gauge the market because I have boots on the ground. I think this is something that Nick here does not have. He's looking at just plain data um, and spreadsheets, and that's great. And you can analyze a lot of things. However, boots on the ground added with data gives you an entirely different perspective. On top of the fact that if you've actually been in the business for the last twenty years, but I did a post on Instagram and I said, hey guys. With interest rates being as high as they are right now, you know, we bottomed out at 5.99 and we got up as high as uh, 6.87 a couple of days ago. Now we're at 6.77 today. I said, hey, guys, even with the mortgage rates being higher, are you still seeing multiple offers in your markets? Because, you know, month ago, 30 days ago, we were seeing multiple offers all over the place. And I wanted to gauge if we were still seeing that. And you guys can go and I'll screen share that Instagram post at the end of this video and read some of those uh, comments to you. But it, it was overwhelming the amount of agents all over the country that are getting multiple offers, um, losing out to um, other offers, um, going for more than list price. Now, this is not 2021, of course. It's not 2021, and there were agents in there that said, no, I'm not seeing multiple offers in certain areas. New Orleans was one of them, an agent said. Uh, there's an agent down in Fort Lauderdale that said he wasn't seeing multiple offers. But then there's other agents in Fort Lauderdale that said they are. So not only is it local, uh, but it's also per agent and your business and how you actually operate, I guess. There was a, a lady that said that she wasn't seeing multiple offers in Tampa. And then the next agent said that he got 20 offers on a listing within a week. So I think it just kind of depends. So it's kind of sporadic. But these agents were all over the country. And what does that tell us? It tells us that demand is still extremely strong. Even though we've lost a good 30, 40 percent demand is still massively strong. And like I say, will we run out of buyers who can afford in this environment? That's a question right there. However, we've got millennials coming into their prime buying years and they're just coming in by the truckloads in their prime buying years and going to for years and years to come. So it's just going to be interesting how all this kind of plays out. Let's continue the, the, uh, to, to watch here. 
the spring 2023 housing market is going to be an absolute ghost town. We're going to have empty open houses. We're going to have desperate sellers feverishly trying to cut the price. And we know this because according to the... Now, right there, you know, we're going to have desperate sellers. We're going to have, we're going to have empty open houses and stuff. You know, that is, <laughs> that's pretty out there for somebody to come on YouTube and say that because right now as it stands, there's high demand at open houses. There's multiple offers on properties. We're still seeing pro uh, properties go for more than, than asking price. And this is happening in some of the markets that he actually mentions in this video. Um, so no, it, that's kind of it's kind of like, I mean, this is this is definitely some clickbait. He gets a lot of views. He has a lot of subscribers it's because he he plays to those negative fears and everything, and he kind of uses the data to to back up what he's saying. But he's not in the field. January 2023 Realtors Confidence Survey by the NAR, only 29% of home purchases last month were... Now, see this right here, 29% uh, percent of home purchases right here. Okay, this is cash sales. 29% of, of uh, uh, transactions were cash sales. So he's saying, hey, 71% of houses had to have a mortgage. And so we're going to have this really incredible crunch in the market because most homes need mortgages and mortgage rates are so high. And that's his thesis there. But if you look at December, 2022, it was 28%. If you look at January, 2022, that was before interest rates started coming back up. You can see our here on his chart that it was 27%. So it's actually increased one percentage per column here. And there's actually more cash offers, uh, more cash transactions right now than, than there has been. And I believe that number is going to continue to increase as we move forward with higher interest rates. Were made in cash, meaning that the remaining 71% needed a mortgage to facilitate the transaction, meaning that this mortgage collapse being worse than 2008 is a huge problem for the U.S. housing market. <laughs> this this housing crash is going to be worse in 2008. This is this is hilarious. Particularly in certain cities and states where the buyer demand has already collapsed significantly, the more that inventory goes up and that buyers drop out of the market, the more pressure there will be for prices to decline. Now, let me be clear. Also, um, there is some good data in this video, and I I do believe that we're going to see prices continue to soften. Um, I think it's going to continue to just drift down a crash. Absolutely not a correction, a mild correction. And that's the exact term that Fannie Mae used mild correction. And I'll show you some numbers that they came up with here later on. But um, the, the buyer demand has uh, uh, completely collapsed. Um, he's not talking to real estate agents. <laughs> he's not, he doesn't really have boots on the ground asking uh, what's really happening in the market. This is all super speculative and it really plays, I'm guessing, to the algorithm. We are not even close to a bottom in this market yet, especially with mortgage rates now going back up. Mortgage rates went down by a little bit over the last month and a half. Well, they are now on the rise again, up to 6.6% .6 in the latest survey from Freddie Mac, and they could go even higher in future weeks to 68 or 69 now, what's very interesting is, is that he was right about this. It did go to 6.8 and a little higher, almost a 6.9. So he was right about that. But what I think is very interesting when you when you look at this is that that little small you know downtick from the let's just say 7.1 or so down to you know 6.5, 6.2 to 6.5. It was like the floodgates opened up <laughs> and mortgage applications literally uh, went up 28% in one week. Um, and so that, you know, the, the slightest little decrease in interest rates every time we see this, and we're going to continue to see better data when it comes to inflation. And that is going to drive mortgage rates down. That's going to drive 30 year fixed uh, down. Um, you know, as we see these inflation numbers come out, the spread right now between the 10 year treasury and 30 year fixed is 3%. It's normally 1.7 to two. 
All right, 1.7 to 2. 2 is like the on the high end for the spread between the 10-year treasury and mortgage rates. It's 3 right now, which means there's a lot of room right there to come back down to normal from the 10-year treasury. Plus, you've got inflation that's going to continue to get better as we get better reports. May 10th is going to be the big one where everybody's expecting to see really incredible year-over-year -year numbers and to see that situation improve dramatically. Only time will tell there, and I'll definitely be reporting on it. But let's continue to listen in. 2023 were made in the transaction, meaning that this mortgage collapse, beer demand, we are not even over the last eight or six point still fundamentally priced out of the market. And we won't see a bottom in this housing market. It won't look like a good time to buy for you until we see both home prices and mortgage rates go down. When both home prices and mortgage rates go down, it will bring down this typical house payment in America, which is now around $2,500 a month for a new home buyer. That's double what it was in 2020. And it's also almost double what it was in 607 before the 2008 crash. We need to see this line go down significantly, the house payment line, before it is a good time to buy. Now, there's a lot of people out there, everyone, who say that we're not going to see that house payment line go down. They say prices aren't going to go down. A lot of realtors and investors say this because their argument is inventory is low on the U.S. housing market, and as a result, prices won't go down. And we can see there is some legitimacy to this some legitimacy <laughs> there's a lot of legitimate legitimacy to it and look at what he talks about right here this is very interesting claim according to the u.s census bureau there was only about 720,000 houses available for sale at the end of 2022 there's 720,000 homes for sale at the end of 2022 that's compared to well over 1.3 million houses for sale back pre-pandemic but what i want you all to pay attention to is the bar right next to it. As you can see, folks, there's about 14 million houses that are sitting vacant on the U.S. housing market, not for sale, which shows you that actually there's tons of inventory in the U.S. housing market ready to be released onto the market. And if only like 5% of all those people who own vacant property, like investors or second and third home buyers, if only 5% of them decide to sell and cash out at the top, that would instantly double inventory on the U.S. housing market. And suddenly no one anymore would be talking about low inventory. And the Okay. <laughs> right there. You hear what he says. If only 5% of the vacant houses that are second homes and investor-owned houses were to list their home for sale. That would be around 700,000 properties. If they were to list that house for sale, that would double the inventory overnight. Well, the problem with that is, is a lot of things. Number one, why would these owners sell? There's going to be no reason for them to sell. If it's a second home, they enjoy being there. They don't care what the market's doing. This is something they enjoy. This is a place they enjoy to go, take their family, vacations, whatever. If they're an investor, why are they going to sell in that environment where prices are going to continue to drift down? Why are they going to sell lower prices? Um, rents are going to continue to be good, even though rent is coming down in a lot of places and it needs to come down. Uh, rent needs to come down. Uh, rent needs to come down and mortgage payments need to come down. That's why I believe that prices are going to are going to soften and interest rates are going to come down dramatically throughout the year. Um, I say dramatically. When I say dramatically, I'm talking about like 1%, maybe 1.5%, something like that. That's dramatic, by the way. And, and it goes the same way when interest rates have shot up so much. It's been dramatically, it's been a dramatic upswing. And that's why we're seeing this. Mortgage applications, you know, were since 1994 and stuff like that because of the dramatics of it. And it's really gotten squeezed into less than a year. This this entire, you know, interest rate hike and mortgage rates from two and a half to seven has happened in literally less than a year. That has never happened before. Of course, we're going to see these type of things. But if you take 5% of the vacant houses, that's 700,000 houses, let's just say, and what he's saying is, is if ever if all 700 listed on the exact same day, that would never happen. Number one, there's no reason for that to happen. Number two, there's no reason for those sellers to automatic to all of a sudden say, "Oh, I need to sell." The market's down. Let's go ahead and go out here and sell. That's not going to happen. 
And if in fact there was 5% of those homes to, to go on the market, it would happen over a long period of time. So that that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty dramatic to say that, that that's where the inventory come, is going to come from. Because I've always asked this entire time through this to the bears, where's inventory going to come from? Where's it going to come from? Builders are down 30% foreclosures are nowhere even near half of what they were pre pandemic. Um, you know, <laughs> where's it going to come from? People are sitting on four and a half percent interest. 85% of mortgages are four and a half percent interest. They're not going to sell to trade that mortgage rate in for a higher rate. Uh, I mean, some will, but it's not going to be an, a huge influx of inventory. So where's the inventory going to come from? Nobody knows. But Nick here seems to think that 5% of the vacant houses out there um, are going to all of a sudden decide to list for no reason. Four percent in Tennessee and a hundred percent in North Carolina. Now we're starting to see that inventory pile up in North Carolina and cities like Charlotte and Raleigh and Greensboro and Winston-Salem. We're just starting to see that inventory pile up and we're seeing a big reduction in home buyer demand on this graph. Inventory coming up 150 percent. That's like that's like you have, you know, all time lows inventory, you know, and you've got 10 listings. And then all of a sudden you've got, you know, 25 listings. Um, that would be a 150% increase. Now, when you look at those numbers, yeah, there, there's a lot more listings. But when you look at pre-pandemic, pre-pandemic, guys, is what I want you to pay attention to here. When we start, when we get back up to pre-pandemic levels in terms of inventory, which there may be some local markets that are. But but as a whole, as a country, we have 700,000 listings at the as of the end of uh, 2022. And guess what? Inventory has plummeted since then. Uh, we're lower right now. Uh, and as a country, we're kind of I think I believe we're kind of leveling out. If you look at the Redfin data, we're kind of leveling out and we're getting ready for what happens every single year for inventory to slowly increase from now Till about August, and then inventory starts to decrease again. That happens every single year. There's going to be no surprise when inventory starts creeping back up because it happens every single year. But when we say it's it's up 100%, it's up 80%, it's up 80 percent from such a small number, and we're still not even we're nowhere near close to what we were pre-pandemic. When we hit pre-pandemic levels, and then we continue to go up from there and, and buyer demand continues to drop at that point, that's when we can start to really say, okay, there's more than a correction happening here. And only time will tell that. And I'm not predicting anything. I'm not saying that I know what's going to happen. I'm just saying that there's a lot of speculation here about there's going to be some kind of massive crash or shift in the market. You can see the 15 metros in America with the biggest collapse in pending home sales over the last year. And what do you see? Charlotte is number two at minus 54%. Winston-Salem and Greensboro are there at minus 47%. And you can see suddenly a lot of markets in the southeast like a Fayetteville, Arkansas, a Jacksonville, Florida, a Cape Coral, Florida, a Deltona, Florida are suddenly struggling to find home buyers. More not struggling to find home buyers. So yes, all those numbers are correct. Uh, we're down dramatically. But the economies are built on supply and demand, okay? Supply. Where's supply? We're still at an extremely low level compared to demand. Why are we seeing multiple offers right now across the country? That would be my question to Nick here. Why are we seeing multiple offers all over the country? Um, you know, people, you know, 20 offers per house, not every listing, right? Certain price ranges, certain pockets, certain locations. But I'll show you at the end of this video, um, I'll show you uh, a screenshot of my Instagram uh, uh, post from earlier today that shows you exactly 
what's happening real boots on the ground quite the contrary in many situations because as buyers in a certain city see prices go down the fomo just completely goes away it's at this point everyone that we need to talk about the economy so right here he talks about the economy over the last 50 to 60 years and what do you notice every he talks about the peaks here so so the peak the peak of home sales that happened you know, four significant times, you know, in the past 60 years or so. And what he goes on to say is that after the peak, it's about a year or two, and then we actually have a recession. So let's listen in. Everyone, is that after each of the previous three peaks, we had a recession following those peaks. In 1980 and 1982, we had a double dip recession. Uh, 1990, 1991, we had the Gulf War recession. And then, of course, from 07 to 09, we had the great financial crisis, indicating that the collapse in home sales we're seeing today is telling you that a recession is around the corner. And it So the argument for me on that is that outside of the 2008 Great Recession, during the other two recessions he's talking about, where home sales peaked out and then within the next year or so there was a recession during both of those times home prices did not go down they leveled out and kept going up they, they even went up during the recession so home prices didn't crash and that's why you didn't see him put that chart up of home prices during housing recessions because that would go against what he's trying to say here that we've, we're going to see this you know, crash of prices, which in my opinion, we are not going to see. It takes about two years historically to go from peak home sales to the start of a recession, which suggests that we could be in the start of a, a official recession uh, by the middle of 2023. And if we do have a recession, which I think is a pretty high likelihood, that's going to make all the metrics of the housing market look even worse. It's going to suppress buyer demand even more. It's going to cause inventory to go up by more. It's going to cause prices to go down. And oh yeah, it's also going to cause foreclosures. So we no, it's not going to make prices go down. That doesn't mean that prices are going to go down. He acts like that's just part of the package that prices are going to come down, you know, with a recession. That is not always the case. 100%. Haven't seen the foreclosures really yet. In fact, the foreclosure rate is near an all time low right now. However, that's something that's going to change very soon. And he's talking about foreclosures. So with foreclosures, what you have to understand, and he's comparing this to 2008, okay? And that's to get clicks on the video. But compared to 2008, the average credit score of somebody with a mortgage is 770 right now versus 670 back in 2008. You've got 85% of mortgages that are under 4.5%. And not to mention that most of those mortgages are from, you know, pre-pandemic, they're from before prices went crazy. You guys realize there were 6 million transactions uh, in 2022. Okay. There were 5 million uh, in 2023, uh, I mean, six, 6 million in 2021, 5 million in 2022. Okay. There's 100 million houses uh, out there, and around 65 million or so have a mortgage on them. So when you look at the market as a whole and you think about the, the metrics here and how much equity, so there's an average right now, an average 58% equity in, in each house, right? On average across the country, 58% equity. So prices would have to go down dramatically to get down to a place where we're going to start seeing short sales and foreclosures. Now, that doesn't mean foreclosures. Like foreclosures means people can't afford their house notes and, and things of that nature. But what you have to look at is the fact that jobs reports have been great. Wage growth has been great. Well, we're not talking about right now. We're talking about in the future. We're talking about a recession that's going to happen. Okay. We'll sit back and watch that. But I will say that we're in an incredible a place right now, fundamentally speaking, compared to the fragile 2008 that we're comparing this to.
Speaking so of data gonna, from the federal housing I'm gonna jump here, ahead we're likely to gonna also have a recession based on the historical data, just as the mortgage market has collapsed for home buyers. So what does all of that mean for you out there, for someone who's either a home buyer or an investor trying to decide when to buy one? A big metric that I'm looking at to tell me whether a market is a good place to buy and when the bottom is going to be is the relationship between the cost to buy a house compared to the cost to rent an apartment. And really what you want to watch out for everyone in your housing market is if this orange line, the cost to buy is significantly above the cost to rent. So if you see this right here, right, this is Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. The cost to buy 2,600, 2,638 to rent 1,858 right? The, the, the difference there is $779. So I ran the numbers on this. Um, and I ran the numbers on this for a lot of different areas. Okay. And what I came up with was that that $779 difference the, during that payment, when you buy the house and you're paying that higher mortgage rate than you would, if you mortgage payment than you would, if you would have rented it, that $779, around $600 of that is going towards principal. Okay. Depends on your rate, depends on the price, depends on terms and all that stuff. But it almost equals the, the difference there. Now, you may say, okay, you're still losing, you know, $150 or something like that. So I looked at this in LA. I looked at this in Nashville. I looked at this in Dallas. And it all came out to be very close to the same, which was the difference between what you could rent a house for versus buying a house for. The difference, you almost got all that back in principle. Now, again, you're, you're still losing a little bit of money, okay? So, but in my mind, even as bad as it is right this second in terms of, rent versus buying, it still makes way more sense to buy long-term. If you're going to buy a house and live in it for 10 years, you come out way ahead when you factor in appreciation. Yes, in the short term, there's a lot of uncertainty. Yes, in the short term, we feel like prices are going to continue to soften. But in the long term, we know that things are going to be worth more and we know that things are going to appreciate. We're going to find the bottom. It's going to come back up slowly. And over the course of five to 10 years, you're going to have a lot of equity built up in that house through a principal pay down and also equity through appreciation. And that number at the end of the day of equity that you're going to have in that house is going to be way crazier than the money you lost paying rent. The numbers aren't even close. And so what I think is very interesting right now is that what he's talking about isn't even figuring in uh, two to one buy downs and, and mortgage rate buy downs, which by the way, I do feel like the mortgage buy downs are, are artificially holding prices up just a little bit longer than they should. Because buyers walk in to the payment being lower. They're like, okay, I'll pay that a little higher price because the payment, I can afford the payment. And so I don't think that necessarily is a good thing. The good thing about it is the fact that you have to be approved for that end rate. So say the rate is six and a half, your rate's going to be four and a half the first year, five and a half the second year, and then six and a half. You have to get approved for that six and a half percent rate. So I think that that is a really good thing that mortgage, that the regulators are doing that. But I do feel like it's, it's, it's slightly, uh, artificially holding prices up, maybe a little higher than they should, especially on new construction, because 75% of builders are paying for those buy downs. But when you look at this buy versus rent scenario, I believe that the scenario is going to get a lot better when you buy because prices are going to continue to soften and interest rates are going to get better. But even as bad as they are right now, it's still night and day better to buy over the course of a decade. And guess what, guys? We're going to be here another decade. We're going to be here. We're going to, we're going to be living here on this earth. And time is going to go by, whether you're renting or buying. Why not be building equity in, in a house, in a property, so on and so forth? So um, I'm going to switch over. I want to show you guys before I run out of time here. Uh, let's see. Bam. I want to show you guys what some of these other agents are talking about right here. So today I put out this post. 
I said, are you still seeing multiple offers right now, even with these higher interest rates lately? I mean, there's hundreds of comments here. Okay, you can go there and scroll through them yourself. But this person says, yes, absolutely. Uh, multiple offers uh, over asking in Los Angeles. Yes, multiple offers everywhere. Yes, every offer I'm making in Dallas is a multiple offer. Every offer I'm making in Dallas is a multiple offer. Um, lower price point had 18 showings and three offers in three days. She also goes on to note higher price points, uh, hardly any showings. So again, this is pockets, but this is still happening, right? This is still happening. Yeah, I had seven offers. Uh, let's see, even had multiple offers on an off-market property with one open house. Uh, let's see, this person got outbid by 20 offers. This is all recent. This is recent. Seeing them, okay, this person seen multiple offers with thirty, uh, three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollar condos. Uh, let's see, yes, had a cash offer get beat out by five other offers. I mean, this is just on and on and on. Yes, 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 yes. Eleven offers on a one point one uh, million dollar house in DC. Um, let's see, had to escalate to fifteen percent plus. I guess they had to put a escalation clause. Yes, around the Disney area a lot. Yes, five offers in total on my listing in the greater Los Angeles area. Um, it goes on and on and on here, guys. Yes and no, depends on the property. Some buyers refuse to enter the bid and, and wait to see what the first offer goes. Um. Just had one with 97 showings and 24 offers. I mean, that it goes on and on and on here. Right here, Fannie Mae talks about, okay? They talk about while Fannie Mae expects inventory levels to remain constrained, it says tight inventory alone won't be enough to stop the housing correction. Okay, following the 2.5% drop in U.S. home prices in the second half, a 22, Fannie Mae expects U.S. home prices to fall another 4.2% in 2023. And then in 2024, they say they expect prices to fall another 2.3%. So Fannie Mae is saying that prices fall 4.2% this year, 2.3% next year. But here's the punchline. If Fannie Mae is right, okay, if Fannie Mae is right, this housing slump would see the national housing market pass through a mild home price correction. Okay. Not a full blown house housing price crash, right? After all, if these price drops do happen that they're talking about national home prices would end, uh, 2024 still up 29% over March, 2020 price levels. Okay. That's strong. <laughs> that is strong. Hmm. But anyway, I just wanted to do this for you guys, basically just to stand up to some of the, a lot of, we see a lot of videos, we see a lot of articles, you know, that just scare a lot of people, scare a lot of buyers, scare you guys, scare a lot of agents and brokers. And yeah, there's some, there's some data that looks scary, mortgage applications and this, that, and the other. And look, here's the punchline of the entire video. It doesn't matter. I know people are saying, oh, we said all that. Now you're just saying it doesn't matter. Oh, that's just, you're just BS. No, actually, if the market gets back to 2008, that means prices went down about 50%. How easy is it going to be to sell stuff? And how many great deals are you going to pick up? Um, oh, well, I'm going to own a house and it's going to be worth 50% less. But yeah, so will every other house. So when you sell it to trade up, right, you're, you're, you're buying something that is also 50% lower than it was. Hello, guys. Hello. Um, you know, what, what bad is going to happen here if, if that were to happen? Now, that's because you're watching this video and you understand my philosophies on this and how we win either way. If we're an agent, if we're a buyer, if we're a seller, um, if we're an investor, how we win no matter what the market does. I'm prepared for anything. 
And I want you guys to be prepared for anything. I don't want to sit up here and, and sell the dream of false hope that everything's just going to be, you know, wonderful. Um, I mean, right now there's a lot of agents struggling and that's why I'm going live in about an hour to answer all those struggling agents questions. I'm going to put a link in the bio for that. Um, so you guys can join there in about an hour. And I'm, I'm going to do everything I can do to help as many of you guys through your situations to keep pushing and don't quit. So anyway, that's it for this video. I'm going to put another video right here for you to watch. I'll actually put a video here of me calling live prospects, an old school video of me calling prospects live. So enjoy that. Let me know if there's anything I can do oh, for you so in the long. comments. We'll see you on the next video, which is right here, by the way. Keep selling. Look. Top down, quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Get like